Hey there, beautiful people. I am putting out a quick video. Well, I guess we'll see how quick it is. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Because I got a new graphics card. And I know sometimes it's fun, you know, to show off the differences between different graphics cards and show off how much better the new ones are. So I'm here to do that. My old card, for reference, I did a whole graphics comparison video when I got that one. Um, but my old card was the RX 470, and it was a great card. It held up for, you know, good three, four years, something like that. I don't remember exactly. It's like when I got it, it was somewhat dated. Um, so I wanted to get something that will work with all modern games just to get me 1080p, 60 frames a second gaming. I'm not picky. I don't care about 4K. I don't care about any of that, you know, fancy like super high refresh rates, all that stuff. I just wanted to see like ultra settings, 1080p, smooth gameplay. In my research, I found the RX 590, which luckily had gone down in the, you know, recent past. So I was able to pick one up fairly cheap. Right now I'm just showing off some Rise of the Tomb Raider footage because that was one of the, uh, the first games that made me realize that my card could not hold up. Um, this was actually a game I had played a little bit into and didn't have any troubles. And then for some reason, like it opened up into more of an open world, like this kind of snowy Russian landscape. And it was chugging um, to the point where like not only could I not record it, I could barely play it. So I stopped. I uninstalled it. And then more recently, I picked up the Xbox Game Pass, which included the newest Gears 5 game. And loaded that up uh, to find that I could pretty much do a mix of like medium and high settings on it. And it ran okay. Um, with Tomb Raider even, like I was trying to run high settings on a game that came out in 2014, I think it said. I'm ranting now. The point is, I needed a new card. So, I thought if I was going to do a graphics comparison, I should use Gears 5 as my quote-unquote benchmark. Uh, because for one, it just came out. It's a great indicator of how this graphics card holds up to modern games. Two, it has a really nice benchmark in it. So what you're seeing right now is my RX 470, the settings on that, and just this the standard benchmark on basically the recommended settings for that card. Doesn't look bad. Totally manageable. But when you get to the actual breakdown of the card itself, you can see that it's a pretty spotty frame rate and the main cause for that, like even at, you know, medium to high settings is the bottleneck in the graphics card. Uh, my CPU can blow this game out of the water, but you know, GPU rendering super low. Moving on, I just wanted to do kind of a quick look at the recommended settings for the new card. Once I got that all installed, we've got here mostly ultra settings. Uh, with a few random drops, I'm not sure why, but for the most part, ultra, which is what I expected at 60 frames a second, 90, 1080p. Skip over the benchmark for that one because we don't need to keep watching this benchmark, but it did well, noticeably better. If we compare the graphs from the last card and the new card, the graphics card is much less of a bottleneck. Again, this is not a high-end card. It's a budget card that's perfect for 1080p gaming. That's everything I've read about it. That's exactly what you should expect from it if you want to get it. But it's also what I need. Anyway, last graphics test here is the ultra settings. I just wanted to crank everything up to ultra, except I guess the textures, because for some reason the ultra textures won't install. There's also a lot of places on the internet that talk about that problem. Don't understand it. But... Notice it does look a lot better than the old card did at its recommended settings. It also runs a lot better than that card did at Ultra. Again, it's, you know, it's a little lower than the recommended was, but it's perfectly fine for what I'm looking for. If it's holding up this well with essentially the most modern game I have and one of the biggest AAA games out right now, I have no doubt that I'll be fine for the foreseeable future. So we're going to jump into actual Gears 5 gameplay because benchmarks only show so much. But just out of curiosity, I wanted to real quick set it to 1440p just to see if it can still hold up 
at higher resolutions than 1080. Very loosey-goosey test. Just curious. It's a little choppy, honestly. It's It doesn't look as nice as I would want it to. Uh, some of the smoothness of the gameplay in 1080p just feels a little... Well, I can't think of another word than choppy. Again, totally playable. If I had a monitor that output at higher than 1080p, I'm sure I would be perfectly content with this. But I don't care enough to deal with it because I have 1080p monitors, so I'm going to drop it back down and do a proper 1080p gameplay test. Okay, so I don't think it's any secret that Gears of War 5, or Gears 5, I guess technically, is a beautiful game. My recording settings aren't the best here. I'm still dealing with some issues with OBS. So if it doesn't look as good as it should, no, that's the reason. But everything is set to ultra. You can tell it's buttery smooth gameplay. It's just kind of hard to perfectly record a game to show off the graphics when you're, you know, beholden to the issues of your recording software. <laughs> so real quick, I did kind of want to, while this gameplay is being shown off, I did want to go over why I wanted to focus on just 1080p gaming. And why I thought that a new graphics card, you know, a budget graphics card, would work for my purposes. It seems like these days everything is focusing on scale. So games are coming out with, you know, better on Xbox One X, with 4K graphics and all this stuff. But a lot of that just boils down to higher quality textures. Just like that ultra texture pack I couldn't get to download. But the actual games look just as good with all the ultra and everything like that at 1080p. If that's all your monitor can output, then they would at 4K on a 1080p monitor. Since I don't care about 4K stuff, why would I spend a bunch of money on a higher end card that can, you know, smoothly do 4K graphics when I'm not going to get the actual quality out of that? So to me, the RX 590 was the best value pick for my PC in order to get 1080p graphics out of it. And I'm very content. If Gears 5 is the benchmark, which I feel like it should be as a modern, you know, AAA title, I think I will be very content with this card for a long time. I think for the most part, aside from like being able to activate ray tracing and things like that, this card is going to hold up to what modern games can put out because they're not really getting like better graphically. They're just going for higher resolutions and more detailed worlds. Um, I think that's kind of the problem I was having with Tomb Raider is like it was fine in the more intimate like cave settings, but once it got under the open world, my card couldn't handle that area specifically. So the bigger games get, the more processing power you're going to have to have in your graphics card, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, you all know that. But I think I just kind of future proofed myself for at least a few more years with this card. And I don't have to spend like a thousand dollars to do it. So that is kind of a, you know, quick comparison between the last gen AMD graphics card, the RX 470, and the newest 500 line card. And hey, by the time I actually want to get like the, you know, 5700 line or the Radeon 7s or whatever they're called, maybe they'll be down to this price point. But if you're looking for a great card in the sub 200 range or around 200 range, you really can't do wrong with the RX 590. So yeah, that's all I got. I uh, hope you enjoyed this quick and dirty graphics comparison, and until next time, keep on gaming to whatever ability you are able to with your computer. Uh, I don't know, but he might need to do it soon. You're dead. You're super dead.